everybody. Hope you're enjoying your December. It's been a busy week here in the River City. And uh, let's put an exclamation point on a Saturday of watching some Ospreys basketball as an early opportunity doesn't go. As you take a look at the performance orthopedics and spine starting lineups for Trinity Baptist. Well, might be a travel there, no doubt. Uh, it was on the Eagles and Bebe Daniels. Good to have you along, man. Uh, the Ospreys have been playing pretty good defense as well. I think that's obviously everybody talked about their offense, birds of Trey. And as you look at their starting lineup again, performance orthopedic and spine starting lineup for the Ospreys. Some familiar names there, and Chaz Ladair in there. One familiar name not in. Let's talk about it real quick before I ask about the defense. Carter Hendrickson back spasms uh, came out of the game the other day or last week. Again, went over Austin P. Only played two minutes, and so they're monitoring that as we get closer and closer to the conference schedule. Yeah, and Carter is the, the leader of this team. Um, so it's good to see that they were able to pull out the win against Austin P uh, without him. Uh, so that's, Jose Placer had a great game. The rest of the guys played solid defense all around, and they were able to pull out that win. Well, now they're on the defensive end. And again, I think the defense, everybody knows this program as a birds of tray in the offense as the Eagles get on the board first. But the defense has been pretty good so far this year. I mean, the competition and the record doesn't, you know, jump out at you. But I think the defense has played well for Matthew Driscoll. Yeah, and this was maybe the toughest non-conference slate they've had in uh, probably program history. So, and I watched those games. They, were, they hung in tight with a lot of those bigger schools, UCLA, Arizona State. And I'm um, just credit to how versatile this team is on the defensive end this year. A lot of switching, a lot of rotations, um, going back into the man-to-man -man principles this year. Jaden Parker, first two points for the Ospreys. So each team with a bucket. And now a turnover again for Trinity Baptist. Trinity Baptist located right here in Jacksonville. So uh, it's a familiar foe as you take a look at John Jones in his 11th year here with Trinity Baptist. There's Emmanuel Adetoy, and we highlighted him just moments ago. Can't get that to go, but Jaden Parker active early. Parker with a tough bounce pass inside there. Good look, just a little bit tough on the delivery there. That's why he's usually the guy receiving the bounce pass, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Then battle leads the Eagles in scoring, dishes it out. Good close out there by Parker. Here comes Dorian James as we get settled in here on a Saturday. And James will give it up and the ball goes out of bounds off Trinity. So some good uh, defense early on by the Eagles as they get their hands on some basketballs. Yeah, both teams kind of feeling each other out early on, seeing how they can be defended. Adedoyan now in the corner. He got it to go. Adedoyan's had himself a big game already from three-point land this year here at home, and he gets off to a nice start. He's on fire this year at home. I don't think he's missed. <laughs> Not very much. Thought he was going to threaten Parker Smith's record uh, last uh, couple of games ago here at home. And then Placier got going last week. So the Ospreys really been feeling it at home. I mentioned 103 points, 103 points, and 93 points on the home floor. So the home cooking's been good, just haven't had enough of it. Yeah, that's right. This team has explosive capabilities. Just got to find a consistency. Um, trying to get more open shots, the shots that we want to take like this one. Here's a data doing again, and two for two, this time from the left side. Uh, good conversion from transition, uh, semi-transition offense. Get the ball moving around, get the defense kind of a bit scrambled. There you go, wide open three. So it's an early 8-2 lead after a couple of threes by Adedoyan. And it all starts on the defensive end. That's some good defense by Jaden Parker right there. Obviously a little size advantage inside with Parker. And later on, bring in Jonathan Abar as well. Other than Carter Hendrickson, Osprey's pretty healthy right now. And again, here's a stretch run of the non-conference schedule got florida state coming up as well and then really get going in this hey sun we'll see some new teams this year yeah as well oh there's plus here look at the steal intercepts the pass and 
gets to uh, finish it off, trying to draw the contact, gathered and finished. That's good focus there to maintain possession of the ball and with a nice reverse finish. Trinity Baptist is trying to find some offense, but the threes are not falling. Come up way short there with Xavier Rose. And here are the Ospreys pushing it. Lanier kicks it back to Adedoyan, looking for his third three. <laughs> that one doesn't go down. He had eight of them against Weber International a couple weeks ago, ended up with 24 points, and didn't even play the final 15 yeah. minutes. Maybe he could have challenged Parker's record. <laughs> oh, he could have. But Parker was doing the game with me, so I think Coach was, <laughs> he was aware of it. <laughs> There's the two uh, by the Eagles, 10 to four. Plus here coming off a 35 point performance and that's just too easy. That's a layup line right there for Jose. And he was doing it from all over that last game, knocking down the threes, coming off screens, even with a couple mid range step back jumpers with some cl clutch buckets down the stretch against a tough Austin P team. Uh, you, yeah, that was a really nice win. Uh, again, without Carter for most of the game, went out first couple of minutes. That was a nice win against Austin P. And I think that's a, that's a nice confidence builder yeah. because there's been, you know, playing a little bit of competition that they've been able to handle like Weber International. We'll see what happens here tonight. But they've also played some tough competition where they're not expected to win games. That Austin P win was a really nice one a week ago. Yeah, it's always good, especially when you get that W at home in front of your uh, home fans there right before Christmas. Oh, there's Jaden Parker again. He had the first basket of the game. He's got one to make it 14 to six now. And you want to establish you guys like Parker and Ibar early, early in games like this. Um, you don't want to kind of go stray away from them with you know, getting open threes so we can get shots like that. You want to give the big guys some love too. A oh, mid-range jumper, no good, but right there to finish it off is MJ Masonette. And some defense by the East. Meanwhile, here things uh, smooth for the UNF Ospreys with Matthew Driscoll in charge and an Ospreys offense. It's off to a pretty nice start, 14-8. And here are the Eagles in transition after the miss. But look at all the rebounders, and somehow they had four people rebounding the basketball. The Ospreys didn't get it. They have a... Uh, Official timeout to check the shot clock. Brent Martin, along with Demarcus Bebe Daniels, here on the call on ESPN Plus on a Saturday afternoon. Trinity Baptist College from right here in Jacksonville against the UNF Ospreys, of course, here in Northeast Florida. 15, 15. Like the Ospreys to transition to a 2 3 zone here. And the miss, the threes keep missing so far for Trinity Baptist now 0 for 3. Meanwhile, the Ospreys have a couple. Emmanuel Adedoyan, and that pass a little too tall for the pretty tall Jonathan Abar. Yeah, you'd like to see uh, Placer kind of dribble down a bit more towards the wing, uh, get a better angle on that entry pass. Ospreys off to a good start shooting the basketball. Probably uh, a few too many turnovers. That's number three for them, for Matthew Driscoll's liking. So got to take care of the basketball a little bit better. And as conference play gets closer and closer, you want to kind of uh, cut down some of those lackadaisical turnovers like the one we just saw and uh, get more efficient in our possessions. Travius Whitfield misses. Ospreys pull down the rebound. Here's Jarius Hicklin, who I think has done a nice job really this year. He's impressed me. It might be a very good addition for this 2022 year as we start to turn the calendar. Yeah, his shooting ability off the bench has provided a big lift for the Ospreys. Baron Baum misses the three. And the Ospreys will go back down the other end to play some defense. Baron Baum, a 6'8 freshman. Again. Little token pressure here by the Ospreys. Try and trap the first pass at half court. Speed the game up a little bit. 14-8 our score here. Eight minutes in and that's a turnover and somewhat of an unforced one. Number four on the turnovers for the Eagles of Trinity Baptist. 
but we'll have to keep it up on the defensive end so they can stay within striking distance. If you don't play defense against the Ospreys, it's going to be tough to catch up, especially because most teams exchange threes for twos against UNF. There's a foul underneath. MJ Masonette picks up the foul. First one of the game for either team. Pretty clean start here, whistle was. It's off of a couple turnovers on both sides that both coaches uh, would rather not have. Here's Hicklin now to inbound the basketball. Berenbaum gets some good position underneath, and I think that might have been a goal tend, yeah. It was. So good entry pass and a good finish underneath. And Berenbaum and the Ospreys have doubled up Trinity Baptist here with 12.08 to go in the first half. You played, uh, obviously, here with the Ospreys. You know it's a tough schedule early. When you start hitting mid-December right around the holiday time, you peek ahead and you know the conference is coming. Do you start ramping it up a little bit? I mean, is this the time you start trying to find? You kind of know who you are a little bit better, even if the record is 3-9? and nine? Yeah, you try to... You know, you find your fit and how you're going to fit into this year's team, uh, what your role is going to be, especially on the offensive end. Um, November is kind of a, a feeling, feeling out process. And then once you get, like, as you said, mid-December, late December, uh, guys start sinking into their roles and start accepting how it's going to be in the conference play in the pecking order in terms of offensive possessions. Very nice touch pass. Fausto Alvarez from Bartram Trail High School here in the area. Finishes it off, and here come the Eagles again. Now down just six and a chance to close the gap even more. Battle has it. He's been quiet so far. Forces up a shot. A bar misses. Uh, rebounds it. See if the Ospreys can find some offense. Berenbaum in the post. Dishes it out to Hicklin. Hicklin for three. No good. Good possession there. Inside out basketball. Move the ball around a couple times. Got an open shot. Now you, can, you can live with that if you're UNF Ospreys. A good drive at the baseline, but a miss there. Alvarez active underneath. He just scored a moment ago in SPN+. Plus. Ospreys playing some defense. Trinity Baptist College inbound, and there's a steal. Hicklin couldn't do much with it, so the Eagles have it back. We talked a little bit about the defense. Defense looks pretty good early. Yeah, Ospreys doing a good job of reading the screen. has got a couple steals here. Um, just see if they can keep that up and get, get some easy transition points. Added the way in, looking for a friend to throw the ball to and ends up finding Chaz Lanier. A good swarming defense there by Trinity Baptist. Extending the possession for the Ospreys. Five to go on the shot clock now. See if anybody realizes it. Here's Parker, two on the shot clock. Somebody's got to throw up a shot. They won't do it. Good defense and fired up over here on the Eagles bench. As they should be. That's a terrific defensive possession. Um, they're swarming the paint. Any post touches, they're bringing two, three guys, kind of have the Ospreys in disarray. You got to get the ball out, get it moving. Don't try to dribble too much. And eventually you'll find an open player. Sam Battle's been pretty quiet. He's a leading scorer for... Brittany Baptist, up and so far now. And now we got an offensive foul. That's Fausto Alvarez. He's been uh, pretty involved here in the last couple of minutes. That one a little bit too involved with the shoulder. Yeah, you can't dislodge guys like that. Good job by Jaden Parker to accept the blow and um, absorb the contact and get the whistle there. Second team foul on Trinity Baptist. Ospreys are yet to commit one. Six-point lead. Let's see if they can get something going on the offensive end. Been a little quiet there for the Ospreys. Good defense right now. Ian Canada. Another Jacksonville kid from Beaches Chapel. Really getting it done on the defensive end with some intensity. Yeah, great intensity extending the offense out for the Ospreys, having trouble getting their inching passes in. Um, for you and if you like to get something going towards the rim. A little bit too much lateral movement with the ball. Now you want to try to get downhill. Get some kick-out opportunities. Here's Lanier now. 12 to go on the shot clock. Baseline shut down. Kicks it over to Hicklin. And Hicklin knocks down the three. So that offense had been stymied, but just momentarily. And there you go. The, uh, with the pink being so uh, strongly defended by Trinity Baptist, you're going to have those opportunities to get those uh, kick, out, uh, kick out shots there. Great court vision by Chas Lanier there. And great shot by Jerry's Hicklin. Uh, how about, speaking of great shots, Sam Battle got that one to go. First couple of points. It's a wild two for battle. 
Absorbed the contact and was able to finish. Great backdoor pass. And then a kick and a swing. And tell you what, pretty good recovery defense by Trinity Baptist. Now they end up committing the foul, but they got out there because I thought that was good ball movement by the Ospreys. They're active, man. It's like they have seven guys on the court at some times. Canada exits the game. After really intensifying the defense for the Eagles. And when you're um, undersized, you want to have that extra activity. Uh, you don't want to let the uh, bigger team get into position and they have to make those easy entry passes. You want to kind of swarm them. Here's Hicklin, just hit a three moments ago. Adedoyan's got a couple of triples already. Good pass inside to Dorian James. Strong move off the glass, and he's got a couple. A good look there on the baseline. Dorian's just kind of hanging out. A uh, strong finish there. Pretty good patience by the Ospreys offense. Again, uh, I think Trinity Baptist is really bringing it on the defensive side. And uh, patience paid off. Yeah, they are. Good job by the Ospreys maintaining their composure to get the easy shot there. There's Pascal Alvarez. Just misses, but the Eagles will keep the basketball. Not sure how that one didn't go down. In the first couple minutes of the game, Trinity Baptist was having a hard time getting penetration themselves. Um, as the game has gotten a little bit uh, further developed here, they've done a good job the last couple possessions getting uh, drive opportunities, finding guys on the shuffle passes. Here's Battle. Ospreys get their hands on the basketball. Hicklin stole it and now Got the 50-50 ball, two on the floor. Ends up with a jump ball. We'll go over to the University of North Florida. Both teams got guys diving on the floor there. You love to see it. I'm sorry. I'm say with Trinity Baptist. <laughs> 21 to 12, our score. Osprey's in the lead. Getting it done on the defensive end. Just giving up a dozen points in the first 12 minutes. Xavier Rose now trying to work a game. And Alvarez has really been a target of the offense for Trinity Baptist. Look at him, active. Battling back, for it. it back, <laughs> but a couple of shots won't go, and there's battle now. And then Jakari Randolph's three no good. Three won't drop, but Alvarez right there again, and then has it stolen away. Zay Plas here in transition. Good follow by Jaden Parker. A lot of activity. The execution's questionable. Yeah. <laughs> Love to see the effort there. They got around four offensive rebounds in that possession, so they had the chances. And if you're doing that, if you want to limit those opportunities, because eventually those shots will fall. Fausto Alvarez, number 33 for Trinity Baptist. He's been very good, very active. Bartram Trail guy out of St. John's County. Battle looks to drive baseline. And Nice. Great some space and floats it. Nice, nice, footwork. nice footwork there on the baseline. Good touch on the shot. Makes it 23-14. Osprey still comfortably ahead. And now Hicklin will line up a three and back rims it. Three ball still not friendly for the Eagles. Tyrese Friedman misses that time. See if the Ospreys get something going towards the rim here on this possession. See if they get out of Doyle to look. He's been hot again for three-point land. He's got two of them. But now it's going to be a foul. And did over 50%, but just three for 10 from three-point land. And they're not on a scoring blitz like they have been here at home earlier this season. No, and they haven't had any attempt at right now. 14 points in almost 14 minutes. He has a tough defensive team this year. They're versatile. They switch a lot of ball screens. And they also do a good job of uh, rebounding the ball as well. Here's Jose Plas here. Ten seconds to go on the shot clock. Little step back from the free throw line. Got it to go in rhythm. Great balance on that shot. He has that mastered. I made that shot a couple times down the stretch last week against Austin P. Um, so it's good to see somebody that can score the ball at all three levels, outside, mid-range, and at the rim. Really amazing what they've been able to find the point guards from Dallas Moore to Yvonne Gandia Rosa to now Placier really fit this style and scheme offensively and, and kind of the engine that makes it go, right? Yeah, in modern basketball, you want to have that point guard who can also score the ball and facilitate. So it's been 
a great job by the UNF coaching staff to find three guys in a row that, uh, that are dynamic in that aspect. And style-wise, it's like they can do a lot of the same things, like that shot right there, Placier hit, or the floater. All three have been able to hit that. We thought that was just a Dallas Moore trade. Yeah. Now he's very good at it, maybe better than the rest. But still, these other guys, they can drive the lane. They're crafty. They're savvy. Uh, all three similar in that yeah, respect. They are very similar. Adetoyan's already got two three-pointers. That one's off. And it will stay with the Ospreys as Berenbaum challenged the rebound. And it went off Jakari Randolph. 25-14, our score. Uh, holiday break, so we won't see the students at the game today. Another good open look. Couple good looks there by UNF on that um, trip down the floor. See if we can get another defensive stop and get some more good looks. Brittany Baptist had a good look, can't get it to go. Had another good look, can't get it to go. That was D.W. Lewis out of Jennings, Florida. Here's Baron Baum, left wing, shoots the three, got the three, showed the touch for the big fella. Uh, and there you go, great job to kind of cross the court, get the ball moving side to side, finding the open shooter. A nice job by Baron Baum to knock it down. Getting some more minutes and probably even more minutes today with Carter Hendrickson out. And he's a versatile player. He can kind of defend the rim a little bit with positional defense and stretch the floor and also is a good rebounder. So good to, good to have him coming off the bench, stepping in today, of course, with Carter being out. Speaking of positional defense, Jose Blasier doing a nice job of that. Draws the offensive foul. It's 28-14. Ospreys continue to get it done on the defensive end. And if they could heat up for the final four and a half minutes of the first half, they could really stretch it going into halftime. And make it difficult for the Eagles to challenge in the second half. Osprey's doing a good job of defending the rim. Here's Plossier now behind the back pass and Abar started cutting to the basket. It's a tad bit out of sync there, good read. Lanier passes up a three, steps into a three, and just misses the three. And that's a good shot, good patience, kind of let the uh, guy contesting the shot fly by and get his feet set. Just didn't make it. He contests. Meanwhile, Trinity Baptist really struggling for three-point land, yet to make one. Spinelli missing that time. Baron Baum in transition, sets his feet, lets it fly, and just misses. Had a little extra stutter step with his yeah. feet. I think it threw him off his rhythm a little bit. You can always tell when it's in rhythm and when it's not, right? Yeah, kind of probably was surprised he was that open for that long. I was going to say, I think, <laughs> I think even though he's out of rhythm maybe or, or got a little thrown off, he's so open he still had to shoot it. <laughs> Test the wind, spin the ball around. <laughs> yeah, <could've. laughs> uh, that would unforced error there by Trinity Baptist, and Abar will throw it down. <laughs> Offensively not bad, but again, we have a high standard for the Ospreys offense. When we've seen them at home, 103 points, 103 points, 93 points. Hasn't been that kind of offensive production. How about Parker? Parker Great. started off the game well and has a nice play. Yeah, he was absorbed the, uh, the blows there and be vertical and get the block. Jordan Priester misses and back the other end. A little out of control. And there's Parker again. Nice job to gather it. Jaden Parker showing why he's uh, such a highly uh, coveted prospect by UNF with the defensive uh, versatility. They're able to switch ball screens, good feet laterally, and showing his length, they're getting back-to-back -back block shots. Brittany Baptist really struggling from the field, under 25%. Here's Hickman, he gets it to go. That's a contested three, and he got it from the top of the key. Guy went under the handoff, and uh, Jerry Hickman hasn't, does not shy away from any semi-open shots, able to knock it down there. A lot of times we talk about the Ospreys just boom, 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 knocking down three threes in a stretch, and the lead increases. Now look at the lead, it's 19, but I, I still think it's really what they're doing on the defensive end that has increased the lead even more than the offensive end. Yeah, aside from a couple second-shot opportunities, they've done a great job um, playing a complete game in the defensive end, contesting shots, uh, good rotations, drawing a couple charges and block shots by uh, Jaden Parker. Meanwhile, it's a struggle right now for the Eagles of Trinity Baptist College. 
Priester, Jordan Priester that is. Jaden Parker though on the other end with the rebound and looks like he got fouled and they call it. He'll go to the line for a couple of free throws. First free throw attempts of the game, I think, for either team. You got that right. Bebe Daniels, you just brought up something in the, in the break, and, and we know the Ospreys are using a new basketball for the first time. And the story is that the NCAA is using a new basketball for the tournament. So the Ospreys are like, hey, if that's the basketball that's going to be used when the tournament comes around, let's start using it. And yeah, with this new ball, I mean, it kind of takes a while to get adjusted to it. I know they probably practiced with it this week, um, but then, you know, it's a different story within the game. The ball seems like it's, it has an extra bounce to it when it comes off the rim. Had a couple funky bounces when guys go up for the rebound, so we'll see how that goes as the game develops. Yeah, and the Ospreys uh, just shoot 4 of 16 for three-point land, and Trinity Baptist really struggling. So maybe it does have something to do with just the new feel and, yeah. and the bounce and, and getting used to it and acclimated to it. It's basically how intense uh, both teams are playing defense on the perimeter. It kind of speeds you up a bit and you don't have a, such a good feel for the basketball. It can affect your shot. 33-14 is the score. The Ospreys get it on the change of possession after the jump ball. Ospreys have played solid here. Again, it's not been explosive, and most of that's because some of the three-point shots aren't going down for 17, actually, now from three-point land. But still up 19, not much to complain about if you're an Osprey fan. Another behind-the-back pass. This time it finds Dorian James, and Dorian finds the bottom of the net. Nifty pass by Jose Placier there. Um, Dorian able to have his feet set and knock it in. Now 36-14, Osprey is just trying to keep Trinity Baptist quiet, and they have. Trinity Baptist hasn't scored in over five minutes. And the Ospreys are super active tonight, closing off driving lanes, getting their hands active in the passing lanes. Lots of deflections, lots of steals. Almost had another one there. Yeah, couldn't get it in the corner, but now 49.6 to go in the first half, 13 to go on the shot clock. And Trinity Baptist has been stuck on 14 for since over the six-minute mark of this half. Quite a long time as a credit to the Osprey defense tonight. Have to fire up a shot there, misses, and then they get it right before the shot clock were to expire. D.W. Lewis doing some work on the weak side, and that uh, ends the drought to get the 36-16. Has a chance at a three-point play. And that's the worst type of shot to rebound, an air ball at the end of the shot clock. Yeah. <laughs> but also the toughest, right? I mean, you're kind of anticipating something going off the rim. Yeah, exactly. And they turn it into a three-point play. And let's see if the Ospreys now will hold for most of the final moments of this first half. A little surprise pressure there coming off the free throw by Trinity Baptist. And now a foul, and that will be a one-and-one. -one. So those are free points, really, for the Ospreys. Probably not the best of fouls because Jose Placer can shoot it from the charity stripe. And Trinity Baptist did a great job there catching Ospreys off guard kind of with the pressure. And you hate to see them foul at, at half court. Burn 10 seconds off the shot clock as we get close to the end of the half. You won't give away uh, possible two points at the free throw line. Jose Plotz here, he really uh, makes things work for the Ospreys. He struggled at times this year against uh, some of the marquee competition that the Ospreys played, but also had some very nice games too. And his best, and maybe his best game of his career, a week ago against Austin P, and really, really buoyed the Ospreys to the W with Carter Hendrickson out uh, after the first couple minutes with back spasms. Carter continues to be out, but Jose showing some leadership in that game against Austin P, and, and showing his ability to score 35 in that one. Yeah, and that's what you like to see. If you look at the stat line, you may say, oh, he's struggling this year, um, but it's good to see him maintain his confidence going to that Austin P game. As you said, stepping up with Carter Hendrickson being out for that game. Uh, it's good to see, and that's encouraging to see as we get into the conference season. You're going to need different guys having those types of night if you want to come away with the conference championship. And as always, it seems like with the play that they have, uh, as Placier misses that, you really just try to find a guy when you have to take Placier out of the game who can come in and fill that void because the offense works more in sync with him in it, but he can't play 40 minutes a game. Yeah, and they still need somebody to step up and find that role, kind of the offensive engine there, as you said at the beginning of the game, that Jose plays for UNF. And um, they have a couple guys that are capable of doing that, just haven't seen it yet. Uh, Preacher misses, long rebound, and here comes the Eagles on the run. 15 seconds to go in the half. 
37-17 game. And the Eagles missed that. Here comes Hicklin now. Can they get one shot up before the half? It looks like they'll be able to in transition. And that's a foul. I thought he got hacked on the arm. Didn't know if it was just going out of bounds by the official, but I think it's a good call. Knock it into the seventh <laughs> yeah. row, right? Um, but, yeah, I was a little surprised. I did not. I would have lost that. <laughs> yeah, I would have lost <laughs> that, that prediction. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did not think that's how it was going to happen. Hicklin, anyway, at the free throw line. has a couple free throws and knocks them both down. So the Ospreys now three or four from the free throw line, and they get the ball with 3.1 to go. So this could be uh, – I hate to say a big moment. They're up by 22 points, but certainly add a couple more points on the board they didn't expect. And here we go, Hicklin. He hesitated, probably shouldn't have. And how about the touch? A nice first half, especially defensively. Trinity Baptist will try to fix some of the shooting woes. Shot just 25%, did not make a three, and only one for one from the free throw line. They get the ball first there in the blue. Ospreys in their home whites, leading by 22. A great job there by Chaz Zanier, probably uh, UNF's best on-ball defender. Hey, how about that? We got a three-point basket. That's a good start. Trivias, Trivias Whitfield, 4-3. That's the first three for Trinity Baptist. And if you're Trinity Baptist, that's encouraging to see. Uh, you didn't make any of your outside shots in the first half, but you generated some looks. So uh, if you continue to follow your game plan, maybe you can get yourself back in this ball game. Ospreys try to start the second half like they did the first, getting it inside. Parker just missed. Dorian James hard to the floor. It looks like he's okay, though. Now Whitfield will fire it up again, no good. And Alvarez, young man from Bartram Trail, he's been very good on the boards. There's another offensive rebound, that won't make the coaching staff happy. No, it won't, and I can guarantee you that's something that the UNF coaching staff stressed in the locker room during halftime, that they have to cut down on the second chance opportunities by Trinity Baptist. Um, so that's how you let a team stick into the game and stick around in the game and eventually come back and have a chance to beat you. Yeah, that's uh, 11 offensive rebounds now. Trinity Baptist out rebounding the Ospreys and Bruce Evans joined us at halftime. That is not something that the staff was pretty happy about. And it's something. One second to go on the shot clock there. They had to fire one up. And now how about this? Another offensive rebound potentially, yeah. 50 50 ball that the Eagles got to and then a foul on Adedoyan. So. Uh, we've got an arms cross, Matthew Driscoll. You know they addressed it at halftime and not a good opening minute in that regard from the Ospreys. Yeah, and a great, uh, got to give credit to Trinity Baptist. They're fighting hard to generate those second opportunities. Alvarez uh, forces a shot, no good, and this time the Ospreys get it. They're in transition. A little lob pass, and how about the finish by Chaz Lanier. Nice catch and finish. And I think Chaz Lanier is a silky smooth athlete. That was effortless to get above the rim there. <laughs> I mean, that pass was not above the rim. He had to bring it up above the rim. Highlight of the night so far offensively for the Ospreys, but it started with some defense and transition. Here comes Lanier again. Plus here, nice pass inside Dorian James. Good hands, though. Michael West got his hands on it and a steal. Little blow by there, Parker. Got beat by Battle. Sam Battle, the leading scorer for this Trinity Baptist uh, college team. Uh, had a quiet first half, but coming out aggressive in the second half. As Parker, who can shoot the three, but not ideal. He was wide open. Yeah, that's, not, that's not the primary shot you're looking for in the UNF offense. Probably not the first seven seconds on the shot clock either. Here's Alvarez underneath. Nice block by Parker. He's really been everywhere today, though. That's at least his fourth or fifth block. They're doing a great job. Here's Lanier, a little dump off underneath. Dorian James can't finish, though. Great drive there by Chaz Lanier. Um, good dump off pass, like you said. It's unable to finish by Dorian James. Now you're right, by the way. Parker has five blocks now in this game. He's really stuffing the stat sheet. And he's blocking him at the rim. He's blocking jump shots. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to go for a steal there. Another three-point miss. A lot of uh, contact underneath on the rebound. John Jones wanted the call, didn't get it. Flossier off the window and in. Nice finish with the left there. It's interesting. It feels like this is a good start for Trinity Baptist. But they're still down by 21. 
Yeah, and they're still following their game plan from the first half. They want to play aggressive on the off Ospreys on defense, on the defensive end, and, I, and drive it towards the rim. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit out of control there by a battle. Great job by Plaza here to slide over and, and draw a second charge of the game. Yeah, battle leading scorer for the Eagles. He's been slowed a bit today by this defense of the Ospreys. It maybe forced the issue just a bit too much. Dorian James draws the offensive foul. We get a couple of substitutions. James exits the basketball game. Berenbaum back in. 43-22 our score. Really been all about the defense of the Ospreys and the misfiring of the Eagles offensively. Placier now will launch a three off the screen. He got it to go. And it's 46-22. Always good to see a call set in in the basket just how you draw it up in practice and you execute it well. Uh, they do that quite a bit now. And how about that three? Good looking. Once again, it's the second one. Travis Whitfield who started this half in a nice way. Mr. Whitfield knocking in the second uh, trade early here in the second half. Now Placier looks to answer, does not. But the offensive rebound by Lanier. Barrett Bob really kept it alive. Jaden Parker, easy two. Nice catch. 48 25 our score. Trinity Baptist runs a play off the timeout, and they get the finish as well. That's Jacquez Anderson for the first time getting a bucket today. Here's Hadadoyan now. Had two quick threes in the first half, and well, maybe he should shoot it more. He's got another one now. Shooting 53% this year from three-point land. That's almost unreal. He's very confident in his stroke. Uh, takes the shots that he has, uh, that he practices. You can tell doesn't really force any looks. Another offensive rebound by Trinity Baptist. The net has got to be usually an annual matchup. And that's Parrish Hotby, another Jacksonville guy. For a couple. Entry pass into Dorian James. Brent Orton along with Demarcus Bebe Daniels. Here on ESPN Plus as Dorian gets a couple. Good patience there by James. Um, it's easy to get sped up when you have a smaller defender on you in the post. Um, maintain this balance and knock in the baby hook. Here's Hodby now, a little off balance. Runner, no good. Lanier pulls it away. Rebounding about the only thing to gripe about if you're Matthew Driscoll so far. Can't gripe about that guy, Emmanuel Adedoyan, another three. That's his fourth one of the game, and he's heating up. It continues. When he's open, he knocks him in. That one widely misses, and here's Adedoyan now on the run. Gets it over to Hicklin. He launches a three in transition and got it to go in uh-oh time, right? It's uh-oh time for the Eagles when they start dropping threes like this. Yeah, those two guys, uh, Addy Doyen and um, Hicklin, done a good job of knocking in open threes, especially in transition. Back-to-back uh, -back there. And boom, just like that, it's a 30-point lead. By the way, the Ospreys get used to this new basketball because they're four of six from three-point land in the second half. Hicklin now will commit a foul. I'll tell you what, Jerry Hicklin really like watching him play, and, and he can give you some points. Now he's got 11. He can shoot that three. He can get to the through the lane a little bit. Number 10 is going to help this basketball team, I think, over these next couple months in a big-time way, maybe even more than they anticipated. Yeah, for sure. It's, you always want to have those guys that are a little bit more aggressive than the other guys when it comes to getting their shots. You just want to have versatility in your offensive looks. Abar really battling underneath against Alvarez with the whistle for the foul. Got him on a reach around there. You want to use more so your feet rather than your upper body and your hands are trying to get, get a front in the post. Um, easy call for the official there. Just the first foul here, or fourth foul, excuse me, on uh, UNF. They only had a couple in the first half. That one misses. And here comes Adedoyan. Now Chaz Lanier getting in the three-point party, no good. Abar really active, almost knocked it in on the tip. And now there's a whistle against the Eagles. Great fight there by Abar, uh, getting his hand on that ball. Was almost able to tip it in on the first on the first try, um, but was able to draw the foul there. So Adedoyan's got a dozen points. He's four for six from three-point land. He shoots at 53% on the year. Today he's even better than that. He's a career leader in three-point percentage. I mean, think about that. Think about all the guys you played with. Think about how good this team has been, this program has been from three-point land. Uh, that's pretty incredible feat right there. 
That's very impressive. That's kind of like a Final Jeopardy question. You never <laughs> think it would be. <laughs> well said. Well said. And you know, I'm not sure if that's a coach's spot. I don't feel like he came on campus as this, like, sharp shooting threat. I, I don't remember him being pegged that way, and I might be wrong. But, you know, guys like Parker Smith came here, and you knew they could shoot the three, and, like, look out, this guy's deadly. But Adedoy, and he just picks his spots, and when he gets going, he gets going. Yeah, when he came in, I think they uh, thought he was going to be more of like a kind of a two-way, handling the ball, uh, gives you good effort on the defensive end, but it's always good to see guys have upside in the offensive, especially with that uh, three-point potential there. That time he throws it away as he's trying to find a bar, and then Trinity Baptist returns the favor, and they throw it away the other end. Adedoy, and also you can really tell as you watch him grow and watch him play, he's, he's done a good job in the weight room as well. Yeah, that's a credit um, Coach Burt on the UNF coaching staff there. A lot of these guys are starting to fill out uh, as they spend some more time in the UNF program, um, which is a good thing. Had a doy in. Talking with Coach Driscoll as he comes out of the game and has a dozen points. So does this guy with the basketball right now, Jose Placier. He has a dozen. Dorian James. And a foul and a reach in. 59 29 our score. 12 14 to go here in the basketball game. Ospreys obviously in control, starting to find themselves from three point land in the second half. After they struggled a bit, really, it's the only thing. There are two things you could say about the first half as they led 39 17. That was a bit of a struggle from three point land, 6 of 21, and giving up the offensive rebounds. Yeah, the offensive rebounds are going to be the key takeaway from this game, um, regardless of the outcome. And here's Placier now right in front of his own bench. In rhythm, got it to go, and he's got 15. And as you said, Brent, I think the Ospreys are well adjusted to this basketball yeah, now. I right. <laughs> needed about 20 minutes to get adjusted. Good rotations here. Alvarez able to come away with it. He's had a nice game. Really battled inside as an undersized Eagles team taking on the Ospreys. Yeah, he's done a great job creating second looks. Even if he's not been able to come away with the ball, he's kind of tipped it, kept it alive, get his teammates an opportunity to. Pretty wild shot by Randolph there. Here comes Placier. Kicks it over to Hicklin. Back to Placier. And then a nice dump to Abar. That's easy. Nice misdirection. He kind of fooled me on that. I thought he was going to Priest over there in the corner. He kind of flips it back the other way, finds Abar wide open underneath the rim. John Jones wants a timeout. Good guy. Our score. Osprey starting to pull away with some hot shooting here in the second half. Five of nine from three-point land, and they're shooting again. 63% for the half from the floor. Offense starting to go. Defense has been pretty darn good as well. 11 minutes to go in the game. Yet another offensive uh, rebound there by Trinity Baptist. Now a free lane to the basket. And a score by Tyrese Freeman. Baronbaum in the basketball game, Preacher as well. Here's Placier. And that's ball ripped away. Nice steal. Now Freeman a little out of control. Kind of got ahead of himself there. Now you reset the offense, try to get a good look. The scrappy bunch is Trinity Baptist College team. And they always are. That'll go uh, to the Ospreys. Now it's interesting, I'm waiting for Jaden Porker to come back in the game so we can talk about him. But he might not come back in. Who knows, there's 10 minutes to go in the game. They're obviously comfortably ahead. Porker, eight points, nine rebounds, but six block sh shots. One away from tying the school record. Oh, here he comes to the scorer's table. Perfect timing. Maybe he's waiting really for us to bring him up. We spoke it <laughs> into existence, perhaps. Oh, nice play. Pass here to Abar. Nice connection there on the roll. Good look by Placier there. Nice finish. And UNF has a couple guys in pick roll that can go up and get those type of lob opportunities um, when teams are, you know, kind of digging down on Placier as he goes towards the rim. Oh, good give and go there. And Alvarez able to finish. Now ahead to Abar. Nice catch. And then foul. Always nice to watch. And you were one of these guys, the big big fellas here at UNF. They run the floor well, no doubt about it. And eight bars in that category. We saw earlier Jaden Parker with a steal, able to dribble down, dunk it home. And 
these guys can uh, run the floor and they've got some obvious length as well. Yeah, Coach Driscoll, he, he always called, he called us hybrids. Likes guys that can do a lot of different things no matter, no matter the size. Um, if you're a big guy, 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", there's doesn't mean that you can't be uh, kind of athletic and agile there. So they're doing a good job keeping those guys coming through the pipeline. And Parker's going to come into the game, uh, especially if uh, Abar makes his free throw. So I was getting at uh, six block shots in this game, really stuff in the stat sheet. He's been all over the place in this one. And he has a chance uh, to tie the school record set by Wajid Aminu. Aminu had seven against Minnesota, quite impressive actually against the Big Ten school. And uh, also <laughs> Wajid, worth mentioning here, I think he's had five blocks in a game 15 different times. <laughs> that's, <laughs> so, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he knew how to send it the other way. Wajid now playing in Europe as well. Yeah, he is. He's doing well over there. I talk, I've talked to him a couple times. He's enjoying himself. Oh, showtime maybe for Preacher. Yes, it is. Contested dunk. But he throws it down after the steal. And that's good to see Preacher get... I uh, get that dunk there. Kind of had a couple open looks here and hasn't made any shots. Maybe that'll give him some confidence, give him some momentum as he try to find his way into this UNF rotation as we get closer to conference play. Randolph's three, no good. Really struggle from three-point line, but here's that offensive rebound again. And he got that away from three UNF guys. Not that time. Here comes Plas here. A little wild shot, no good, but Dorian James, no good. And somehow Trinity comes away with it. 70 to 33, our score. Coming up on the eight minute mark of this one, Osprey's well in control, looking to get win number four, and they will. Nice cut to the basket, nice fun. I always think this time of the game, you know, get eight minutes to go, it's a lot of game left. And you gotta be a little careful to get back in the track meet, right? You still wanna run your stuff a little bit and not be sloppy like that. Yeah, you don't wanna relax. You did a great job up until this point, running your things, being solid on defense. I uh, kinda getting away from how it was earlier in the last couple of possessions for UNF on the defensive end, especially. Here's Jaden Parker now. Dorian James has it poked away. Yeah, there's still 15 on the shot clock. A little one-on-one -on -one game. I'll tell you what. MJ Masonette did a pretty good job defensively there. Finally got it away from him. Yeah, he kind of harassed. Us at UNF Arena. Happy holidays, everybody. Ospreys with the basketball. Emmanuel Adedoyan with the basketball. He's got 12 points on the strength of four three-pointers. Nine players have played for the Ospreys. All nine have scored. Jazz Lanier drives it. Oh, I thought he was going to throw it down for a moment. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what he had those kind of man. pops in him, but <laughs> didn't it look like it? Yeah, it did. <laughs> he can get up, man. Hey, nice alley-oop earlier in this game. One of the highlights of the game. And it's good to remember, this is a young unit of basketball club, and they have a lot of upside with a lot of guys on this team. And they're they're going to be excited to watch going forward for the rest of the season, even to the next couple of years. And it's really interesting now, just the scope and, and landscape of college athletics and uh, college basketball. UNF continues to uh, get high school kids and nurture and build and grow uh, in their system. But there are obviously a lot of other programs hit that transfer portal and other uh, means to, to get and acquire talent. Uh, but you just said it. You can see these guys starting to play a lot of minutes now. And you start looking down the road in a couple months or even next year, and yeah. you're going to see a team that's pretty well seasoned and uh -huh. has played together for a long time. And you can't, you can't manufacture that. Well, you can't manufacture culture. It's, it starts at the top with the coaching staff, and then the guys, all the guys, obviously have to buy down and just become a big family. And now uh, UNF does a really good job of getting their guys to come together as, as they play along with each other throughout the years. That's a foul on D.W. Lewis as Baronbaum had hit the transition. 71-35, our score. Ospreys have the ball under seven minutes to play. We're keeping a little bit of an eye on a record here. Jaden Parker has six blocks, looking for number seven to tie the school record of Wajid Aminu. Right now, Parker's got the ball and looking for a basket. Can't get it, but tips it home. So there you go. How about with that one, double-digit points and double-digit rebounds. That's a double-double for Jaden. That's the way you get yourself to a double-double of the Moses Malone action there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, double double for Jaden Parker, and uh, I guess we can't rule out a triple double. Probably unlikely. He's four blocks away. Uh -oh. How about that? Yep. There's the block. Three as we away. Talk, and <laughs> now he's tied the record here at UNF with his seventh block of the game. What a basketball game for Jaden Parker. Looks like Barrenbaum got away with the travel, and John Jones and Trinity Baptist wanted it. They didn't get it. A great game by Jaden Parker here, just cha changing the how the other team attacks the basket with his length around the rim. He's challenging all types of shots. He's changed a couple shots, came away with seven blocks. And uh, that's, that's just impressive, and it's good to see. Especially with UNF transition to a more and more uh, more man-to-man -man principle this year. This year on defense, you need those guys that can defend the rim because uh, inevitably you're going to get beat off the dribble. And it's always good to have those shot blockers behind you. It gives you confidence to be able to pressure guys a as a perimeter player. You guys got guys behind you that can defend the rim. Well, you look at Jaden Parker. It's a fantastic uh, story of what you were just talking about. Kind of young guys getting a lot of experience and where this team could potentially go. I mean, he's still listed as a freshman. Obviously, everybody got their year back last year with COVID. Yeah. He played 21 games last year as a freshman. So, yeah. I mean, he's really not a freshman, but but classification-wise. Freshman plus. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you're seeing the growth. I mean, you're seeing a guy with a double-double tonight and seven block shots and what he adds to the team from a length standpoint. And uh, as he continues to hit the weight room and yeah. kills out that body, looking at a guy who could be a really big impact a for monster. the Ospreys. Three-point shot misses, and this time not an offensive rebound. Here's Adedoya now. Hits another gear, takes it to the hoop, and is fouled on the way there. 74-35. Osprey's really looking good here. And a memorable night for Jaden Parker, young man out of Shalott, North Carolina. 6'10 freshman. Plus. <laughs> I know, it's really confusing, right? And that red shirt plus freshman, just freshman plus. Yeah, it's kind of like, and you do that, you, you know, you know the team, and you really go look at other people around the country, and it lists freshmen, and you're like, all right, is that guy really a freshman? <laughs> I mean, we got seniors that are like 25 years old, yeah. now, right? I mean, heck, under this rule, you, you could still be yeah, playing. Yeah, I think I played with a couple of these guys. <laughs> Adedoyan uh, with the free throw, 75-35. Adedoyan checks out. Might be the last time we see him here in this one, 540 to go in the basketball game. Jaden Parker really kind of the only drama left in this one. Will he break the school record here in blocks? Could he even get to a triple-double with 10? We'll find out. I'm open for the triple-double. <laughs> that'd be pretty wild. <laughs> with blocks, that'd be very impressive. No doubt coming into this game, we knew there was a size advantage for the Ospreys. They don't always have those, especially over the years. You know, you played on a lot of those teams where that was maybe the one thing you didn't have. Yeah. Now Preacher lines up the three, and he's got the three. That's really the story of the second half. Those three balls started to fall. Yep. And now look at the lead. It's really stretched from a 22-point lead at halftime to 78-35. to 35. And uh, we talked about that in the first half. They generated the looks that they wanted to take uh, in terms of the three-point shots. They just didn't come away with any makes. But now they're starting to fall, and you can see they extended the league here. Nice shot. By I don't know if it's my eyes or I'm feeling Jaden Parker's eyes just watching Trinity Baptist and hoping they drive the lane just so he can get one more block. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know that he's, like, at seven. But <laughs> <laughs> he's like, come on, bring it in. Take that ball in here. Four thirty-seven to go in the game. Ospreys, Ospreys have really played well at home this year. I, I mentioned it already. They got their three wins at home, um, and Austin P was a big win. Looked like a confidence win. Then they got a chance to rest a little bit this away. week. They didn't yeah. play a midweek game at all, and now this confidence should continue. And then after this, uh, they obviously go play Florida State coming up this week, and that will be a tough one before they finish the non-conference slate with Florida National here at home. So uh, Florida State's been an interesting team this year, up and down. It'll be yeah. interesting to see the, a well-rested, confident Osprey team go challenge the Knowles in Tallahassee. And then when you're approaching those high major power five teams, uh, you want to go down swinging. Uh, you come out and you want to play confident. Uh, nobody really expects you to win those games, but you still have to play the game. Um, we when back when I played, uh, we we played a lot of teams close. Six point losses, ten point losses, fifteen point losses. 
And that does a lot for your confidence, you know, not, you know, especially as a young team, you're not losing my 30 points, 40 points, 50 points. So you just want to go out and compete. And um, it does does a lot for you comes you can keep those games within 15 points or so. And, hey, you may pressure the team, lose by three or four points, give yourself a chance to win at the buzzer. Uh, Rutgers beat Purdue. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago on the shot at the end there. So always just want to play the full 40 minutes no matter the opponent. You mentioned Jaden Parker as he comes out of the game probably for the uh, last we've seen him on the court today. But what a game. Double-double and seven blocks. He ties the school record, ties Wajitaminu with seven blocks in a game. So a big performance by Jaden Parker here tonight. And Abar is getting a couple of those now. Some easy ones for Jonathan Abar. Easy one inside. And these big guys for UNF in between Parker and Abar, they're very versatile. They're athletic. They're agile. They can do a lot of things. It's interesting you mentioned uh, the Florida or mentioned the Florida State game, and who knows? You know, you'd, you'd love to knock off somebody like that, but you go see where you're at, and, and especially compared to earlier in the year, they rolled off these games in a row: Texas Tech, Texas A&M, and they were still out west: uh, Arizona State, UCLA. Then they come back, play Kentucky, right? Then they play Florida. So it, it's hard to tell like yeah. where you're at sometimes playing those games. I really thought the Texas A&M game, watching that one, if they didn't play. They, you know, they started the year at Texas Tech. They drive eight hours, and the next day, within 24 hours, played Texas A&M. Yeah. the next day. And I wondered if it was a flip-flop, that they had played Texas A&M first. The way they played against them that day, they might have been able to pull the upset. It was just the circumstance of playing two games in 24 yeah. hours and driving and all yeah, that. They looked fatigued, you know. Yeah, they did look fatigued. It's tough. You, got that, you know, you fly into Texas Tech, play them, and you got to drive eight hours and get gear up again and play the next morning. Yeah, who does that? Yeah, that's right? NBA, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, they fly, though. <laughs> so it's, uh, it was, that's why I'm interested to see Job. Dozen points make it now for A bars. He makes both free throws, and it's 83-39. You know, it's interesting. Ospreys have 83 points, and they really struggled, it looked like, on offense to get shots to fall in the first half, especially the three ball. But here we are. Tried, no good, but Abar does have a dozen to be in doubles, and Jarius Hicklin has a dozen as well. So very well-balanced attack. Every player that's played has scored uh, for the Ospreys. Uh, that includes Jordan Priester. He's got a handful. Ferenbaum with six. Lanier, three. And uh, Dorian James has seven here this afternoon. There's a three-pointer. That goes down by Randolph. And that's a good possession there by Trinity. Bad is, uh, some dribble penetration to kick out three. Hicklin's got it. Nice peel to the basket by A bar, and he spins it in. And now Matthew Driscoll wants. Player checks out. The Ospreys formula to win looks good, right? Uh, play good defense. Obviously knock down some threes, some easy baskets. We've seen a handful of dunks now uh, yeah. as well. And uh, really, overall, the formula worked. I know there will be I like we keep saying, starting to find themselves, play with mm -hmm. a little confidence. And, and I really think that Austin P win did them wonders. We'll find out if that continues to uh just for your confidence especially having the tough schedule they had early on being able to beat, a, beat another division one team with one of your better players not playing that game in carter henderson um good takeaway there for the ospreys they let that momentum carry over to this game today and you got to wonder too right as you get an offensive foul uh you have to wonder that from a, a confidence standpoint how much confidence is this basketball team gaining with winning these couple of games and looking the way they looked without Carter Hendrickson, right? I mean, Hendrickson is the guy. He's the leader. He's the guy they look to. Um, and and now he's got back spasms, so he's in and out. But that's, uh, that's a pretty confident bunch we see out on the floor without their best player. Yeah, and these guys are talented. So once their confidence meets their, meets their talent, their ability to execute um, and show that the, how they can play on the offensive end, it's going to be a, a tough team to beat in conference play. That three ball no good. A uh, good effort by the Eagles underneath the basket, but can't come away with it. Now here's a bar, and we got a foul. Got to be careful there. He looks like he's okay. 
get out of this game nice and healthy for everybody because everybody else is healthy on the Ospreys roster other than the back spasms for uh, Hendrickson. 85-44 the score with 83 seconds to play. Hey, bar starting to pile up the points now. Nice looking stroke from the free throw line. He's taking a three or two. Um, but seeing that he has a, such a smooth release at the free throw line lets you know that he, uh, given enough time, he'll be able to stretch it out and be more of a consistent shooter from the three-point line. And that's going to um, make him very difficult to guard. He can put the ball on the floor. He can score it in the post. And as I said early, earlier on, he's very athletic. Abar knocks him down. He's made four straight from the free throw line now. You want to see if you keep them on the 50 if you're in F. Oh, that three-point miss will help that quest. Approach a minute to go in the basketball game. I would lock that one in that they'll keep them under there. And now a lob and a throw down by Abar. Four dunks for Yeah. Dunk. <laughs> great find there, great lob by uh, Jarius Hicklin finding Abar on the roll. I tell you what, at the time that would do because that lob was way up there. It was. <laughs> Hey, but you have guys that are that athletic, you just kind of throw it towards the rim and say, hey, he'll go get it. <laughs> well, another offensive rebound. Not surprising, I guess, here today. But then a steal by Priester. And this should do it. Maybe one more shot attempt. Abar kicks it out. Rasmussen. Here's Hicklin wide open on the left side, and he gets it to go. And that's the exclamation point. That'll be the final bucket for the Ospreys, 92 to 44. And we've got 25 ticks left in this one. How about that? 103 points, 103, 93, and 92. That's what they've scored here at home in the four games. They're filling it up, man. Yeah, That's I mean, for sure. Some of that is a little lesser competition, but the idea being.